Hello and welcome. My name is Peter Marchese and today what I'm going to be doing is going over how to create stairs in Revit. Now, over the years the stairs for the most part were pretty much the same as they always have been. But in 2013 things changed a bit. So right now I'm in Revit 2013. I'm going to come over here. And underneath my stair pull down I now have two things. Stair by component and stair by sketch. Stair by sketch is the stair we've always known. You have the run tool, the boundary, and the riser. If I want to, I can draw the stair right down the center. If I come over here, these lines help me line things up. If I go there, I'd have a perfectly square landing. If I come over here, go out a little bit more, and I have my one tread length that gives me that space there. It's essentially putting it together, and I can tell what's happening based on the colors. Green's always my boundary. Black is always my riser. That Things are going to be a specific way. When I say finish, I then have my stair. Now outside of a whole lot of new controls in terms of turning on and off the graphics and being able to tag different things, the building of that stair hasn't changed. But if rather than doing stair by sketch, I do stair by component, now things are actually quite different. I can still draw this with a run tool, but when I'm drawing this now, I can tell this I'd rather draw this from the left hand side, making it a lot easier to line things up and organize my work. I can still set things up so I come over here and do that. It automatically puts in my landings for me. And it still tells me how many pieces I have left. The big difference here though is that as I'm building, I'm actually seeing this. I'm seeing parts of my stair that I can select and manipulate. So I've actually got a lot more control in terms of how I build this. And I can actually pick on different things like my stringers here and modify them one at a time. If I want to, I can actually draw full step spirals, center ends. I can much more easily lay out L-shaped winders or U-shapes that actually have that piece. It just depends on what I'm trying to do. I can also modify my stair to be a monolithic. That's not really any different than how it used to be, though. But what is different is I now have a precast stair, which one of the things I can end up doing is seeing how these are, part, are portioned together and I can actually modify how this end of the stair is done. If I want to, I can actually extend that and actually show how it would have a, almost a, a part to rest on the other components, depending on what I'm trying to do. Now, from this, though, a couple other new features that enable me to do more with my stairs. If I look at the type properties of this specific stair, I can see that I have right support types, but it's not just me saying it's a stringer. It's a kind of stringer. If I click on here, I can actually modify this. I'll, I'll duplicate this. Call it a channel. And then I'm going to actually give it a profile. It doesn't look any different from here, but if I turn this around, you can actually see that that's now a C channel. So I can actually modify my stair now to include different shapes and profiles for my stringers just by telling it what I want it to do. Now, another little trick I can do here is controlling things the way that they look with my stringers. I'm actually going to cut a quick section first just to explain something. When you're laying out stairs, and this is something that allows me to understand how this gets built, there are two parameters that really come into play with things. So, go in here for a second. When I'm in my stair, I have the ability to set up my stringers. And when I look at my stringer here, I have two things really. I've got my total depth, and then I actually have my depth on landings or on runs, those two. The total depth is simple. That's the depth between here and here. And then the other depth is from here to here. That's my two and a half inches. That enables me to do a lot of different things with organizing how my stair looks. The reason why this is important is because if you ever want to have a circular stair that has a wall underneath it, this is one of the easiest ways to actually lay that out. So if I actually do this, got my stair. There we go. Now I'll come over here and say I want to have this different stringer. Go over there, make another one of these, and say that my total depth on this, I think I'm going to say that this is going to be 
10 feet. I can start to modify where things actually are. That one actually ended up underneath the stair, a little bit too deep. But what you can end up doing is telling it that this actually goes down so far and then comes back up. So let me do this one more time so I can make sure I can show you. So I'll come over here and do it really quick. Once it finishes making it anyway. Got that. Hop in here, start modifying my stringers. And this is not something that I couldn't do before. I've always been able to do this. So if I come over here, so stringer height, say 11 feet, and I'll say my uh, the carriage height here, say 10 feet. Now my curved stair has a nice wall underneath it. And the nice thing is that's a part of the stair. Stair moves, stair changes, that goes with it. So these are just a couple of things that you can do with your stairs, how you can lay them out very quickly. Hopefully this is helpful, and if there's anything else that we can help to uh, show you, please feel free to let us know. We have a whole suite of different classes, a lot of information that we can show, both to beginner and advanced. So thank you very much for watching.